let us start simple arithmetics question paper so uh, here as uh, they are indicating word as simple but i am aware that uh, for me arithmetics or rather mathematics was never that simple uh, i have struggled personally in my college life as well as school life i have struggled a lot for maths uh, but because of that many concepts i'm not saying all concepts but many concepts are very clear for me uh, i can understand where exactly there is problem for student but uh, let me clarify again as i am solving here question paper i am not able to explain each and every step in the uh, sum so uh, you have to observe our uh, video lectures they are there on our youtube channel that is savarkar ia study circle you have to observe that Uh, so let us start out question paper. Uh, question paper is there already. Uh, it is there on our YouTube channel. That is Savarkar IA Study Circle. You can go uh, to that uh, channel. Then you can solve this paper and then observe this video. Then only it is useful. Uh, let us start. I will read first sum and then we are going to solve. A is finishing out a task in ten days. B. is finishing out same task in 20 days what will be the time taken that is in terms of complete days uh, to complete the same task if a and b work together option a 15 days option b 7 days option c 5 days and option d 9 days now this is the sum uh, obviously when this type of sums are there we have to first go through the options so here uh, a and b both are working together that means a is taking minimum days that is 10 days now b is accompanying him and so answer must be less than 10 days so obviously we are ex uh, eliminating out option a but all three options uh, b c and d they are below 10 and therefore we have to solve the sum otherwise you can guess easily that less than 10 days are required and answer should be uh, less than 10 days if only one option is less than 10 days then we have to go for that but now we have to solve as options are not under 10 so uh, sorry uh, all options uh, three options are there under 10 now some people are asking this whether i already a finished work then what is left for b okay so just this is imaginary this is arithmetics and we are going to solve now uh, how to solve this sum so we are aware that uh, in mathematics various methods are there some people may like some method or some method may be really easy even easier than what i am going to show so if you are aware of such method then kindly uh, my advice is there that uh, you can put it in the comment box because this is some sort of forum we are growing together here so i am not at all claiming that i am expert in mathematics i am so i am solving this so we are going by a method uh, a is finishing out task in 10 days so whatever the work finish out by a in one day that will be we have to consider as 1 by 10 so 1 by 10 is the work which is finished by a in one day now b is finishing out same work in 20 days that means b is one day's work that should be equal to 1 by 20 now if i am making reciprocal of this i will get days so a will take 10 days b will take 20 days so this is the way we are first claiming that uh, what is the one days work now both are working togetherly so both are working togetherly means uh, in a day a will complete out 1 tenth of work b will complete out 1 twentieth of work when this type of situation is there we have to make denominator as equal how we are going to make denominator as equal so we have to multiply with same factor so i will multiply this by 2 so here i am getting 20 so here also i should get 20 but as i am multiplying here by 2 i have to multiply numerator also by 2 and so that the value will remain same don't cancel out 2 and 2 so you are getting here 2 ones are 2 divided by 20 plus 1 by 20 now you can add up numerator denominator is common don't say 20 plus 20 as 40 and you are getting work as 3 by 
20. Now you are aware that here if A is finishing out in a day 1 by 10 then time required for that that is 10 by 1. Okay, so same way time required will be reciprocal. So I have to take time as 20 by 3. So 20 by 3, uh, 3 1 ja, 3 6, uh, sorry. Yeah, 3 6 ja, 18. Now uh, the thing is there I have to take decimal. Uh, now 20 again. So 3 6 ja, 18. Reminder 2, 3 6 ja, 18. Like that. Uh, it will be there. So real answer is 6.67 days. But in sum, it is asked that whole number of days. And therefore, uh, I have to round up this. As this is greater than 5, I have to round up this as 7. So total time required here, that is 7 days. So B is a correct answer. A pole made up of steel is weighing 10 kg. A rectangular ground is having length 1 kilometer and breadth 500 meter is to be fenced. Distance between the two poles that is 2 meter. What is the total weight of such poles, such steel poles required? So answers A 1500 kg B 15,000 kg, C, 150 kg, and D, none of these. So let us try to solve this sum. I am revising again uh, that uh, let us first count number of poles. I am going by certain method, but if you have any alternative method which is uh, easier than what I am teaching then kindly mention that in our comment box. So this is rectangle uh, now here I am converting kilometer into meter so length is 1000 meter and breadth is 500 meter alright now uh, I have to place a pole so first pole will be here second will be here like that distance between two pole is uh, given here as 2 meters so uh, you can check out for 1000 meter the number of poles should be 1000 divided by 2 plus 1 same for 2 meter 2 poles are there if you are applying 4 meter then in 4 meter there are 3 poles like that so uh, total number of poles from here to here they should be 1000 divided by 2 plus 1 so it is 500 plus 1 so total number of poles here 501 so I am writing here total number of poles I am calculating here so 500 uh, here 501 pole so here I am placing 501 same it is rectangle so on this side also 501 pole now here 500 so it should be 500 divided by 2 that is 250 plus 1 that should be 251 total number of pole here but see the pole here already existing and pole here this is also already existing because we have counted it and therefore we have to reduce 2 from that and ultimate, ultimately answer is 249 so here 249 poles here also 249 poles so total number of poles so 9 9 18 plus 2 26 10 carry forward 1 3 plus 2 5 10 15 so total number of poles required that is 1500 so 1500 poles are required now each pole is having weight 10 kg so multiply it by 10 so you will get answer as 1 5 1 2 3 0 that means 1500 kg is the total weight required here of poles so Going by this answer, uh, option B is a right answer. L, M and N are collinear cities. M is in between L and N. Train P started from M, reached at N within 5 hours. With the average speed of 25 meter per second. Okay. Train 
Q started from M reached at L. Within 3 hours, with the average speed of 30 meter per second. Based on this data, which statement statements is or are true? First, distance between L and M is more than the distance between M and N. Second, distance between L and N that is 774 kilometers. Third, Train P can travel with same average speed from L to N in 10 hours. Okay. Uh, option A, 1 only. Option B, 1 and 2. Option C, 2 and 3. And option D, all 1 to 3. Uh, let us check one by one. So, I am going to solve this sum. Uh, first, L and N are collinear cities. M is there in between L and N. N. So, I have to first make diagram this way that L, M and N. I don't know distances right now. Now, train P started from M reach at N within 5 hours. So, M to N journey for train P that was 5 hours with average speed of 25 meters per second. So, 25 meters, uh, meters per second. Second, train Q started from M reached at L within 3 hours. So, M to L, the journey by Q, that is within 3 hours. Okay, so 3 hours with speed, average speed, that is of 30 meter per second. So here I am writing 30 meters per second. Now uh, we are going through data and we have to find out distances etc. So we can calculate first. So uh, here speed is given in terms of meters per second. Now I want speed in terms of kilometer per hour. You are aware that uh, how to solve this. So 25 into 18 by 5. Okay, suppose you have to carry out kilometer per hour to meter per second, then you have to multiply by 5 by 18. But if you want to convert uh, meter per second into kilometer per hour, then we have to multiply by 18 by 5. Uh, why? You can check out on our, our mathematics lecture, arithmetic lecture. So 5 ones are 5 fives. Are. So here I am getting speed 90 kilometers per hour. As a result, I can calculate distance between M and P. Uh, how multiply this by 5 because 5 hours are required. You are aware that uh, speed equal to distance upon time. So time is 5 hours, speed is 90. So 5 into 90. We are getting distance that is uh, 450 kilometers. So, this is the distance between M and N, 450 kilometers. Now, distance between same way we can calculate L and M. Uh, I am using same thing that 30 multiplied by 5 by 18. So, uh, sorry, uh, multiply by 18 by 5. So, 5 ones are 5, 6 are. It's 108 kilometers per hour. Now again same formula 108 into time required that is 3. So kilometers. So I am writing here this distance as 3 to 4 kilometer. So total distance between uh, L and N that is 324 plus 5, uh, 450 that is equal to 774 kilometers. Now this much I have calculated, let us check, distance between L and M, distance between L and M is more than distance between M and N. So first option, false, obviously you can check out here. Second, distance between L and N is 774 km, yeah, just now we calculated. So second option is right. Third, P can travel 
with same average speed from L to N in 10 hours. So L to N 10 hours. So if it is traveling in 10 hours, then average speed should be 77.4 km, whereas average speed is 90 km per hour. And so it is not possible. So uh, going by the options uh, here, first option that is wrong, second option is right, third option is again wrong. So only two is right answer, but uh, some mistake is there from my side. Uh, the in question paper uh, only two is not mentioned so there is a mistake but right now you are aware that answer is only two a cylindrical tank having internal radius 7 meter and height 7 meter is filled 70% of its capacity by water a steel cube having side 3 meter is added in the water. Now height of water column is option A 4.9 meter, option B 5.07 uh, 5 meter, option C tank will overflow with water and option D none of these. Uh, let us check. This is a uh, some sort of geometry plus intelligence plus calculation skill everything is required here uh, so let us try internal diameter is given uh, you are aware that when cylindrical tank is there volume of cylinder suppose i have to calculate volume then it is pi r square h now uh, just i will explain first suppose this is a cylindrical tank uh, my drawing is not perfect, but you have to imagine uh, its uh, internal radius. That is, this is 7. And this is also, you have to assume now, this is 7. Now, this is a tank, which is filled to 70% of its capacity. That means, uh, suppose this is the level of water. So, this is the height of water column existing. In that, we are adding out a cube having a side as 3 meter. So, because of addition of cube, water level will rise. I am showing in red color. This will be, suppose, don't immediately conclude this much of height. Just I am saying, this is the height increase. So, this will be the new height. Okay. Now, initially, suppose I am calculating volume of this initial. Okay, so for that volume, pi and r will be same, only difference is height. Let us consider, uh, because on addition of uh, this, radius of that tank will be same, as well as pi value is also constant. And so, I have to consider only increase in height. So first, I will uh, find out height. So height is 7 meter and volume is 70% of that. So height should be 49 upon 10 that will be 4.9 meter so this height should be 4.9 meter now what is the increased height this should be this now in that case i have to first find out volume of q so volume of q that will be equal to 3 into 3 into 3 so 3 3 is a 9 into 3, 27. Now, this is the increased volume. Okay. So increased volume, that will be 27. For that formula, it's pi into r square into h. Alright. So I have to find out now this h. So uh, I can consider here pi is 22 by 7. So 7, 7 getting cancelled. Uh, so, I will solve this for h. So, it will be 27 upon 22 into 7. 22 into 7 will be a denominator. This is the increase in h. Now, you can check out this should be in terms of 0 point something. Okay. Uh, if I am going to calculate, then answer because 22 into 7 
uh, this figure is definitely greater than 27. So there will be little bit increase in height that is in terms of 0. Point something. Okay. Now let us check 4.9 meter already there. 5.05 most likely because with 0 something increase is there. Tank will overflow with water. So still uh, 4.9 meter that means in case of 7 meter considerable height is there. So overflow condition is not possible. But last option is none of these and therefore I have to calculate this on. Now again if I am going to calculate this uh, I have to calculate this way 7 ones are or rather I should go by 22 22 ones are uh, 1 now uh, nothing is there so point uh, it will be 50 so 22 to za so 44 50 minus 44 6 again 0 22 3 za no so 22 2 za only so I can keep it here so it is 1.22 divided by 7 approximate so 0 0.7 uh, sorry 0. Point One five seven seven are forty nine three seven four. So total height that will be four point nine plus uh, zero point one seven four. So four seven nine plus one ten one five. Answer is going very close to five point zero seven four because we have not completed here little bit error may be there so we have to consider answer B as a right answer here a sample of hematite contains 70% extractable iron then what is the amount of hematite required to obtain 10 metric ton of iron Option A 14.28 metric ton, option B 19 metric ton, option C 13.39 metric ton, option D none of these. Uh, let us check this. Uh, sample of hematite, uh, you are aware hematite is ore of iron. Uh, so 70% uh, extractable iron. Now, uh, what is the amount of hematite required to obtain 10 metric ton of iron? So uh, it contains 70% iron. Okay, that means if I am taking 100 metric ton uh, ore, then I will get here 70 metric ton iron. Now I have to put it in reverse way. For 70 metric ton iron, I require 100 metric ton ore. Therefore, for 10 metric ton iron, what is the amount of ore required? This way I have to quote and now I can go for percentage uh, or calculation of cross multiplication 100 by 70 multiply by 10. So 1010, so it's uh, 100 by 7. So 7 ones are uh, carry forward 3, 7 fours are carry forward 2 and then continue that uh, 7 to the uh, 14 6 that is uh, okay but 14.2 yeah so 6 7 8 are 56 so no need to carry out further 14.28 we got answer so this is the thing answer is a 14.28 metric ton in a village rainfall is 70 centimeter what is the amount of water can be collected from 40,000 square meter area? Consider one decimeter cube. This should be read as decimeter cube is equal to one liter. Uh, option A 2.8 crore liter. Option B 28 lakh liter. Option C cannot be determined. And option D none of these. Let us solve this. 
in a village of rainfall 70 cm usually we are considering arid or close to arid condition uh, where uh, area given that is 40000 square meter okay so uh, already we have just uh, we can imagine this way that this is the area which is having surface area as 40000 uh, square meter and rainfall over it is making 70 centimeter so this is the thing so we have to calculate volume so we are aware volume equal to area into height but uh, here height is given in terms of centimeter we have to go in terms of decimeter because answers are in there in terms of liter so we have to go in terms of decimeter now uh, here I am giving you relation so you are aware but still I want to give 1 meter equal to 10 decimeter Sanskrit word dasha dasha stands for 10 so deci then 1 decimeter equal to 10 centimeter English word we are using many times century that is 100th part of meter so that's why 1 meter equal to 100 centimeter so this way we have now units now first we have to consider area but area is given in terms of meter and I have to consider in terms of decimeter don't multiply by 10 see the relation 1 meter equal to 10 decimeter I have to square this side so I have to square this side so it is 1 square that is 1 meter square that is equal to 10 square into decimeter square so 10 square is 100 decimeter square so this is all the key factor so multiply this by 40,000 you will get volume equal to area that is 40,000 multiply by 100 so I am converting meter square into decimeter square and height uh, now height given here that is 70 centimeter but you are aware that 10 centimeter equal to 1 decimeter that means multiply by 7 decimeter so 7 4 is 28 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 lakh crore so answer here that is 2 crore 80 lakh that can be considered as 2.8 crore liters so option A is right answer 1 kilogram edible salt contains 30 ppm iodine what is the mass of iodine in 10 kg of the same salt option A 3 gram option B 3 milligram option C 0.3 gram option D none of these so let us solve this when we are saying iodized salt in 1 kg it is just 30 ppm ppm stands for parts per million so here I am writing when 1 kg salt is there 30 milligram iodine is there because ppm stands for milligram per kilogram want to check so kilogram that is 1000 gram that is 1000 milligram so uh, what is we are getting, getting this this is 10 lakh that is equal to 1 million that's why we are saying this as parts per million so 1 kilogram salt contains 30 milligram iodine therefore 10 kg salt so obvious thing is that multiply this side by 10 so multiply this side by 10 we are getting answer as 300 milligram but you are aware that 1 gram equal to 1000 milligram therefore 300 milligram that should be considered as 0.3 gram because uh, divide this side by 1000 this side by 1000 so same thing here divide this by 1000 we will get this answer as 0.3 uh, so answer is here C that is 0 0.3 gram a person borrowed rupees 1 lakh with the simple interest of red 12 PCPA for 2 years other person B borrowed the same amount with the compound interest rate 
टेन परसेंट पी सी पी ए एक्चुअली टेन पी सी पी ए कंपाउंडेड एन्युअली विच स्टेटमेंट इज टू रिगार्डिंग धिस नाउ हियर माइनर करेक्शन इज देयर दैट फॉर टू इयर्स सो बी इज ऑल्सो टेकिंग धिस फॉर टू इयर सो दैट वॉच यू हैव टू एड हियर इन द सम सो बी इज ऑल्सो टेकिंग दैट सेम फॉर टू इयर्स नाउ लेट एस चेक ऑप्शन ए पर्सन ए पेड मोर अमाउंट दैन पर्सन बी बी पर्सन बी पेड मोर अमाउंट दैन पर्सन ए सी बोथ पेड सेम इंटरेस्ट एंड डी डेटा इनसफिशियंट सो यू हैव टू सॉल्व बिकॉज फर्स्ट पर्सन एंड सेकंड पर्सन इंटरेस्ट रेट दे आर डिफरंट बट टाइप ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज ऑल्सो डिफरंट सो फर्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व सिंपल इंटरेस्ट सो वन लैक With rate of twelve percent per annum, so twelve percent, so zero zero get cancelled. So we are getting twelve thousand for one year. So for another year also, that person is going to pay twelve thousand. So net paid by person A, that is rupees twenty four thousand. Now B is uh, going via compound interest, but interest rate is less. Uh, now let us check uh, second person because second person is having low interest rate, but uh, interest is compounded annually. Compound interest is bit difficult for me. Uh, you have to buy hat the formula that amount that will be equal to P one plus R by hundred raised to M. M means how many terms are there? So here amount. That will be equal to principal amount. So principal amount we are aware that is one lakh. Same amount he borrowed uh, into one plus rate is ten. Uh, sorry, rate is ten PCPA upon hundred, and uh, he use it for two term. Now here one by ten. Now you are aware uh, multiply this by ten and multiply denominator also by ten. So we are getting here ten plus one eleven by ten. So uh, it is one lakh into now this is eleven upon ten. I am not carrying out calculation here as it is square. So uh, when we are carrying out calculation, you will get here this only. I am writing uh, or rather I should write here. Uh, just making this. It is one twenty one upon hundred. Eleven eleven is a one twenty one upon ten ten is a hundred. So we are getting decimal is already here two places left. So one point two one. So multiply by one lakh. So net amount will be one point two one multiply by one lakh. So uh, decimal I have to shift it. It is ten raised to five. So one two three four five. Decimal is shifted here. so we are getting answer as 121000 so the person is paying interest that is of 21000 so by compound interest person is paying 21000 and uh, by simple interest person is paying 24000 so person a is paying more amount than person b so this is very clear from this data with my knowledge we have solved some hard sums now e01 if a distance between two trees is 10 meter then how many trees should be planted over the road of length 100 km you are aware the formula a uh, total distance you have to take divide it by 2 and add 1 in the total so here 100 km so 100 km that means uh, this is 100 km so we are converting in terms of meter so it's 1 lakh meter divide it by 2 uh sorry divide it by 10 because distance between two tree that is 10 meter so whatever the distance divide it by distance between trees whatever answer we have to add one so 0 0 get cancel and whatever the thing we have to add one so it's this is the figure answer is 10000 one so option a is correct option If a train of length hundred meter 
crossed the entire platform of length 200 meter in 15 seconds. Then what is the speed of the train? Option A 100 km per hour, Option B 50 km per hour, Option C 72 km per hour, Option D 67 km per hour. Now here uh, when we are solving this type of sum, you have to consider train is crossing the platform. That means total length. Suppose I am showing here, this is the length of platform and train is crossing over. Suppose in this direction train is going, then this is also the crossing point. So total distance travelled by train that is equal to length of platform plus length of train. So uh, that is we have to consider as total distance travelled. Now here, uh, What is the speed of train? So, uh, speed equal to distance upon time. So, time is 15 seconds. So, speed equal to 300 meter. So, speed equal to distance upon time. So, speed equal to distance that is 200 plus 100, 300 upon time required to cross is 15 seconds so 15 1 the 15 2 the so answer is 20 uh, but uh, this is meter this is meter per second so answer is 20 meters per second but answers given here they are kilometers per hour so multiply this by 18 by 5 so that we can convert meter per second into kilometers per hour so 5 1 the 5 4 the so 18 for the 72 but in terms of kilometers per hour so answer is 72 kilometer per hour so option c is right option